Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today I want to show you an interesting concept that I have which I call not trusting the slice or in other words when the player doesn't trust an open racket face. So when we're hitting slice types of shots, so slice or volley or drop shot or even a lob, a slice lob, then we have an open racket face which will make the ball go up even if we continue a downward swing. So if it's not too steep. So when we have an open racket face and we hit the ball with an open racket face the ball will go up with the backspin even though we swing downwards. But sometimes the player doesn't have a good feel for that and they don't also trust. They haven't played a lot of slice and they don't trust this. So this is all subconscious of course for them. They don't know that they don't trust the slice. They just have some trouble with the slice. So I, I've coined this term, I've come up with it because that's how I see it. So I see that the player is coming to the ball with an open racket face. In this case, you will see a lesson with Alan on the volley. He's coming to the ball and he's not continuing the racket path downwards, but he starts to move the racket upwards. And so when I see that, that gives me an idea, aha, this player doesn't trust the slice. So First I need to confirm that theory, so I'm just sensing right, that the player is not trusting the slice. So I will show you today how I see it, like through wet analysis, I see the arm moving up, you will see that. And then how I diagnose, so I ask the player to exaggerate a little bit to see if he really doesn't trust the slice. And then if I can confirm that that's true, then I will show you with what kind of explanation I try to make the player hit the right way, back and slice so that he gets the aha moment, that he gets, ah, I see how this works. And in this video I will show a, a little bit more on, of explanation on how slice shots work. So without further ado, let's get started. So how did I notice that Alan might not be trusting the slice or open racket face? So we were doing a little volley drill here, so the goal was to hit the volley into the doubles alley so Alan was trying to keep the volley in the doubles alley and while he was doing that we were looking at some little technical details like uh, keep the racket as long as possible in this direction and so on. So his main objective was just to control a very nice feel based volley into this doubles alley. So when he's hitting a forehand volley then I can see that he is trusting the slice because you can see that uh, his racket starts higher above the ball, so here's the racket, let me start again, so here's the contact and then the racket continues downwards, so that means it has a downward path and of course the ball has a little upward path initially because that's what I want him to play first, I want him to play with feel and get some depth and get some slice on the ball. So this is not an attacking volley, it's just a controlled volley, we're working on technique and feel. So when he's hitting a forehand volley, I can see that he understands the volley, that he can get some slice on the ball and that he can get some height on the ball. So when he's playing a backhand volley, so we switch every three balls, we switch three forehands, three backhands, three forehands, three backhands. Then on the back end volley it's not so clear because while we can see here that the racket is going slightly lower from the contact point, so, so this is the contact point height and then we can see it's going a little bit lower, it's, it starts to go up very quickly the racket and the arm, you can see on this. And then on this volley, the next one also, I can see that from contact, I'm looking at his arm, you can see that he has this up, up movement with the arms. If I go a couple of times back and forth, I can see he's coming up, right? So on the forehand volley, he was continuing downwards and was able to apply slice, but on the backhand side, he is not doing that. So volley looks okay, but we've been through this topic a few times, like hit a bit more under the ball, put a bit more slice on the ball and so on. But uh, there was not much change. So because I see this lifting of the arm, then I've seen this before, it's not the first time, and I'm aware of this concept that the player might not trust the slice. 
or in other words, the player does not trust the open racket face. That's why I am going to diagnose now this with uh, Alan and see if that's true. So you can watch now the process of how I will try to determine if Alan really doesn't trust the slice, what does that mean and, and how we're going to correct it. Lob me with the volley. Lob me with the volley. Yeah. Okay, now lob me with the back end slice. Just step back a bit. Uh huh. I give you a ball like this. <laughs> okay. I will give you a bit more spin. You lob me with the slice. I'll give you like this. Sorry, this one is a bit. Okay, uh, can you come on this side uh -huh. and throw me the ball or feed me the ball and yeah. I, will, I will love you. Hmm. Okay, and now for the volley. It's okay, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see something? Well, yeah, I mean, I see a lot more, a lot more movement here. Okay, let's see. <laughs> a lot more movement, elbow and wrist. This one is very interesting. Okay, I'm asking you to lob me with the volley. Yeah, well, I, that, mine wasn't a volley. Yeah, it was a volley. Well, but yeah, I see the, the motion was. So what is the difference? We're, we're both hitting the ball up, yes? Yeah. Yeah. The ball's coming up. Yes. Yeah. You see it. But well, my arm is coming up from the shoulder. Your is not. Your your your, your arm is still is, is down. You're basically yes. hitting down on the ball. In yes. Some ways. Does that make sense to you? Well, you, yeah, you, you're, you're clearly uh, more uh, un, un, underspin. Yes. Tremendous underspin. It's a slice. It's a pure. Yes. But that doesn't make much sense, huh? Yeah. I, Where, what is my swing path? You see my swing path? Yeah, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's high to low. You see, where do I continue after contact? This is contact. Where's yes, the next? Straight ahead, mostly. Yeah. Yes. Where's the next frame? It's lower. Lower, yes. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> well, when I see it, I... But, no. For a lob, no. It doesn't... On the I am doing this, the ball goes this. Mm -hmm. You're doing what is logical. If I want the ball to go this, you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yes? All right. Mm -hmm. So I call this. I've, again, this is not you that you don't know what's wrong with me. I've seen it. I call this. I I, I coined the term. It, I call this. You don't trust the slice. Mm -hmm. You don't trust the slice. You don't trust that slicing the ball makes it go up. You don't believe it. So you go up just in case. <laughs> you don't trust the slice. Yeah which means you don't feel it, you don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. Because you're, why we're doing this? Because on the volley, you are not slicing under the ball to make it go up. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to volley the ball up. You are not going under the ball, you are hitting it up. Mm -hmm. If I ask you to hit the ball up on the volley, you are doing a bit up. Mm -hmm. There is no up on the volley, it's all down. 
So now I have to diagnose to see, do you understand slice, do you feel it, then that's how I diagnose it. Lob me with the volley, that's exaggerated, then I see. If the player goes up like this, it means you don't trust the slice. You don't trust it. You're right. That a downward movement with an open racket face will make the ball go up. So you have to figure this out, you have to learn it. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise you're not doing the stroke right. Yeah, no, it's not intuitive at all. Yes. Really. All right, so that's how I, that's I, how I diagnose it. it. I get it. Horizontal. Just swing horizontal. I'll throw you the ball <laughs> on a bounce. Just keep a racket face open like a slice. Uh -huh. And just swing under the ball and try to feel horizontal. Not up, not down. Yes. Okay. You can swing through more than that. You can swing through more cross, more circular. Okay. Not, not there. Just swing through how the arm likes to go. Yeah. Mm. Don't really aim anywhere. Just, just look at the ball. Yes. Yeah. Just notice, just register that your brain notices. Just remember what was your swing path. Yeah. What was your swing path? Now you were trying a little bit. Up. Don't don't try up, yeah? Just just swing. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Mm. Yeah. I'll record you that you see that you see the swing path. Yeah, I see it. I... Yeah, you see the ball, but you don't see your swing path. You need to see it. That you convince your brain, because your brain doesn't trust the slice. Hmm. Yeah, this is what, yeah. so this is what's happening now, because now the ball doesn't go well, yes, Yeah. it doesn't go well, that's what your brain is afraid of, mm -hmm. that's what's happening now, your brain is afraid of, if I just go under, it will not go high enough, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. The problem is that your racket face is now completely flat. It needs to be angled somewhat while you go horizontal. Now it's too flat. You really go under the ball. Uh -huh. You need to go like this. Got it. You don't need to go like this. Yeah. Don't do that. Just picture that your racket face is like this and hit the ball here. Uh -huh. That's right. Now it goes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Again. That's right. Note how high the ball is. Yeah. When you hit it right. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So right now you saw Alan get the idea. So he was able to hit the ball up with a slice, make the ball go high without swinging up high. So he was just swinging through and he was starting to get it. Ah, I see how this works. So I just want to point out here something very important that you, you know, he's done maybe 15 repetitions of this and he got the, ah, I see, I, I see how this works. That doesn't mean he's learned it. And that doesn't mean that if tomorrow he goes play a match, uh, he's going to execute a slice lob well or a slice volley. So this lesson is just what we call a breakthrough lesson. So breakthrough concept. Oh, I get the concept. I understand it. So, and again, these were 15 repetitions. So that was very, very quickly.
in order for Alan to ingrain this so that this becomes second nature, that he actually really trusts the slice, he needs to probably do this minimum two weeks, if not three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and he needs to put in, I would say, maybe 2,000 repetitions. <laughs> I know you would like to hear smaller numbers, maybe 50 repetitions, and I get it, but that's not the case. You do get it intellectually and you, you get it conceptually, okay, I understand and you can feel it sometimes, but to actually make it subconscious that it will function in a match without thinking, you need way more repetitions to, to ingrain this into subconscious. So just something to keep in mind that you don't think that uh, after 15 repetitions and, and 15 minutes of explanation and drills and so on and video analysis, the player has solved their problem. They have only solved intellectually, but not, they have not ingrained the solution into their subconscious mind. All right, here we go. See, now it's going quite well. So, what will deceive your feeling? Into thinking that it's up. It's because you will feel up at the end. Look, if we look at these frames, look. Yeah. You see? And it's because your racket's at the end of your arm. Yes. And it, now look, here's the racket. Here's the racket. Okay. There's the ball. If we go through the ball, now it's lower. Mm -hmm. It's lower. That's one tenth of a second. Mm -hmm. So it was going down. Then, it's starting to go up, see? Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to go up. Mm -hmm. So because from now on, that's seven hundredths or one tenth, so now from this low position to this position now, is point four, which you are aware longer. So you are aware of point four going up and your brain says the way you made the ball go up is you swung up. Because your brain cannot track seven hundredths of a second. So it's deceiving you all the time. But I feel up, yeah, way after contact. So even now when you did it right, your brain can still trick you and deceive you. You did it up, you did it up. Next time when the ball comes, make sure that you swing up. For the volley, right? When, when does this come into play on the volley? It mm -hmm. will come into play when you have a low ball. Yes. So yeah. let's say here you're doing something, even you're hitting kind of a bit more flat and it looks okay, right? Yeah. It's not okay, but it looks okay. Yeah. Now you're going to get the ball here. Mm -hmm. If you don't trust the slice, you're going to volley it like this. Mm -hmm. If you don't trust it. Because you will not slice it, because slice does not, in your mind, tell you ball goes up. So you're now going to do some strange volley with flat shot. Mm -hmm. Right? So you will not... Hmm. When you get a low ball, you have to slice it. See? Now it had slice and... So you will be coming on the volley from this position and you will do this. Hmm. And it's all downwards with an open racket face. Hmm. Got it. So, so hmm. this yeah. downwards, of course it's not downwards like this, right? right? But it's downwards. So this downwards with an open racket face makes the ball go up. So I, I have a term trusting it. Huh? Trusting. When you trust it, you trust it. Then you, you maintain correct technique. When you don't trust it, your technique is fine here, when the moment you go here, you start doing this. And mm -hmm. also then you don't know how to lob with the slice. Because when the lob happens, you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how to slice with the lob, because slicing is down, mm -hmm. like I showed you. So you're saying that, that when you're going to make, because there's the obvious, there's a, there's a topspin version of a lob, but yeah. that the, Use the top spin version of lob, or or you could just hit it up, no spin, not very accurate. Or you're saying that that you can, you can do a slice lob. Yeah. And you will have to do a slice lob when someone 
hits a hard ball at you. Like a fast approach or a smash. Let's say they're hitting a smash uh, and you're yeah, still you there. You don't have any time. You, you need to block yes. it. Yes. Yes. But you just do under. Yeah. It's all downwards. Mm -hmm. It's all downwards. But when you don't trust it, you're trying to do upwards and you will do too much. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will not be fine. When there's a fast ball coming and you're doing this, you will do too much. Mm -hmm. A player will just stick the racket under if you're skilled. Huh? Like mm -hmm. also when someone is warming up their smash. Can we try here? Can you go on the other side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all slice based. So this is the last one, look. Mm -hmm. That's a lob. Down. You see? Mm -hmm. Here's the racket. Here's the contact. Mm -hmm. Here's the contact. Yeah. Down, yes. Mm -hmm. Here's the continuation of the contact. Yeah, yeah. you held it. Cause you're, yeah. So this is all down through the contact. The ball goes up. Mm -hmm. Of course, if now I'm demonstrating you a bit that you see that it's down. If I relax a little bit, right, then my arm would swing up and that can trick you. Oh, it's up. Mm -hmm. No, it's not up. What makes the ball go up is open racket face. You see? Mm -hmm. So there's a combination. There's this angle. See? This angle is like this. And the swing path angle is maybe something like this. And these two angles now determine the flight of the ball. So the flight of the ball is going to go something like this. Mm -hmm. Because this angle, this angle of the racket wants to make the ball go this way. <clears throat> but because I have a downward angle, I am negating it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm subtracting from this open racket face, I'm, mm -hmm. which wants to make the ball go here. With a downward path, I am subtracting a little bit of this upward so that the resulting trajectory is then somewhere, wherever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how all slice shots work. You're manipulating two angles, the angle of the racket and the angle of swinging. And the combination of these two angles produces the angle of the ball flight. Mm -hmm. That's theoretical. You, there is no way to teach it in English or Slovenian or at what angle do I open my racket face and at what angle do I swing. There, you cannot logically process that. Mm -hmm. you, only your subconscious mind can process through trial and error. And that you understand at least what parameters are you working with. Mm -hmm. And you're working just with two parameters. The swing path angle and the racket angle. Yes.